Well, if you were looking for a reason to buy the Nerf Dino Squad Triceroblast, I think that is definitely a compelling argument by itself. D dinosaurs! We're, we're doing dinosaurs now! And you'd think like Hasbro would be the originator and innovator of this, but unfortunately, Zuru beat him to the punch. And I don't even know why dinosaurs are popular now, but I guess we have to talk about the Nerf Dino Squad Triceroblast. What the heck? Now seriously, where did this even come from? Zuru comes out with a couple of dinosaur-themed blasters, and then all of a sudden Nerf has dinosaur-themed blasters, and I still have no idea why. I am completely out of my element when it comes to understanding what the popularization of dinosaurs is with foam dart blasters. There has been a variety of different ones over the last couple of years, but now, now mainstream dart blasting is getting into the dinosaur aesthetic, and if you don't like it, well, there still might be something for you to love about this blaster. Yes, Nerf Dino Squad is a brand new line from Hasbro and they've started off with three initial blasters. Right here, we have the Nerf Dino Squad Tricera Blast, but in the back of the box, we can see the Nerf Dino Squad Stega Smash, which is a single shot pull back Nightfinder-esque blaster that comes with five darts. And then we also have the Rex Rampage, which is a motorized strife reshell. So magazine fed, fires one dart at a time, powered by four AA batteries, you get how this goes. So really, this is probably the most interesting blaster of the entire line. And when we saw the picture of this just a couple of weeks ago, I was incredibly curious because it looks like the Nerf Zombie Strike Sledgefire. It's a dead ringer for the Zombie Strike Sledgefire. And yet, unfortunately, it is not a Zombie Strike Sledgefire in any capacity. In fact, if there's a blaster that the Tricera Blast most closely mimics in function, it is my absolutely most loathed blaster. <sighs> Not the hammer shot, although it is hammer action. I am talking about the Mega Tri Break, whose entire gimmick is a break action barrel that does functionally nothing. Doesn't prime the blaster, doesn't elongate barrels, you don't load it into a breach or anything. The front of the blaster was just on the Tri Break to prevent you. Actually, I don't even know why the front of the blaster was on the tri break. I would love to figure out why that was a thing, Hasbro, but they did the same thing with the Tricera Blast here because the front pivots forward to open up a three shot smart AR system. So you load three darts into it and you use the hammer here to prime the blaster to fire one dart and it will fire top to bottom one after another. So it holds three darts ready to fire and then the stock holds an additional 12. So you could have quite a bit of ammo in a rather small package, but this whole mechanism does nothing. In fact, you're supposed to pull on the front of the horn here in order to unlatch it. But looking at the entire mechanism, it's flat. It's literally just friction. So you can do whatever you want to open that up. And I think the thing that bothers me the most about this setup is the fact they could have done something cool by having the dinosaur jaw open up and you feed it darts. But you take off the entire front of his freaking face every time you... That is such a really dumb idea! Like, you you were so close! Come on! I'm, I'm angrier about this than I really should be. So yeah, no surprises with the function. You break it open, you take three darts, you shove him in the front, you push him all the way back, you can flip it up to close it, pull the hammer down, Point the blaster, pull the trigger, fire it, and it fires actually pretty decently. Now, it should be noted that this comes with elite darts. And if you are watching this video and you weren't aware, elite darts from Nerf are some of the worst darts you can buy in the entirety of foam flinging. If you were to go down to my local Walmart, you would see on the shelf a 30 dart pack 
Select Elite Dart from Hasbro. Literally right next to it for 10 cents cheaper is a 100 dart pack of Adventure Force Waffles, which is not only more accurate, but more durable and better in every single possible way. And if you wanted to go even crazier, just below that for a couple of dollars more, you can get a 200 dart pack. Yeah, so yeah, that's one of the biggest limiting factors about this blaster and out of the box, sure, the elite darts hit a little bit harder when it comes to FPS wise, but you're never going to hit anything with them. So you're better off just switching to using Adventure Force Waffles. Because this is using a smart AR system, as you lose shots, the air pressure actually has to travel farther, which means it loses more power, which means the final shot will always be the weakest. The top shot can hit anywhere from about 65 to maybe 70, maybe a little bit lower on a bad day. The middle shot hits about mid 60s to low 60s, maybe high 50s, but the bottom shot hits anywhere from 48 to 60. It's really bizarre. It's the weakest one by far, which is disappointing, but this isn't meant to be like a super crazy primary blaster. In fact, it's not really meant to be competitive in any way, but it may actually have a use for that. You can actually take this blaster apart. So let's say for instance, you don't like this mechanism up at the front of it. You can remove it. You can simply take out the screw, rip this thing off and you're done with it. You don't like this whole thing right here. Well, you can remove it. It is entirely separate plastic that you can remove. If you just want to remove the horns, you can do that. These are hard plastic, by the way. It could definitely take out your eyes if you did something wrong, but you'd really have to be trying with that one. And then you're met with like a long boy three shot pistol, which is a bit much, but at the same time, three shots, 12 shots and a really nice compact stock. I call it a stock and you could use it for that, but it's mostly just a wrist rest that happens to store ammo and gives it a really nice balanced feel. And the internals are interesting on the Tricera Blast because unlike every single other hammer action blaster that I know of, instead of having a small weird spring underneath the hammer, you're actually just pulling back a standard plunger rod with a normal catch, like, like what you'd find on most other Springer blasters, which means you could mod this thing and Thankfully, because I took so long to do this video, Buff Daddy Nerf has already started modding his and with what he thinks was just a simple Nerf Maverick spring, was able to get the first shot to hit upwards of 90 FPS. And this is just the beginning. There's probably a lot more you can do with something like this. And if you can get this thing hitting 120, 130 FPS with, yeah, maybe a stiff hammer prime, especially for a younger person, but for an adult, in this form factor, with this comfort, I, the ergonomics are really on point with this. I would definitely see myself rocking something like this. And the dinosaur aesthetic is just a bonus if you want it. Really, there's a lot to love about this blaster. Even if you don't like the dinosaur aesthetic, there's still quite a bit more you can do with it. And that's why it may be something you will want to pay attention to, even if originally this doesn't grow on you. I mean, yeah, I do wish they would have done this a little bit better in my opinion. I, that just seems really funky to me, but I'm not gonna hate on the dinosaur aesthetic, even though it might not be my favorite thing ever. It's different. It's just like Zombie Strike or Doomlands or what have you. It's definitely different. It harkens back to the 90s and I'm a product of the 90s. I'm 30 years old, so. But even beyond that, if you see what I'm talking about with a three-shot smart AR potentially upgradable into something better, it's not a huge plunger tube. It's not a huge plunger draw, but it's full of potential. And the package with the ergonomics and everything and even the design are on point enough that I can recommend that even if you're a competitive nerfer and you have some small idea of what you want to use something like this for, it may be worth picking up. Is it the most compact, high capacity, high power platform ever? No. And you can definitely do better for $20. But that doesn't mean it's complete right off because there are things to like about the Dino Squad Tricera Blast which is maybe more than I can say for the other blasters because I'm not looking at them at all right now, although I will have to review them. So make sure you get subscribed because as soon as they pop up for sale, I will be reviewing them. And so oddly enough, it's actually a pretty good start for Nerf in a new line in 2021. And I hope they do the zombie strike kind of deal with this and give us some cool new mechanisms with it. I know Nerf will never be the most high powered thing out there on the market and it doesn't have to be. As long as it has some kind of upgradability, if I want to upgrade it and a neat form factor that I can do this with. Like for real, this is worth buying the blaster just by itself. I'm Walcom7, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you watch it all the way to the end, hit like, hit subscribe. We got a lot more reviews coming. 
I've got some really cool stuff I want to show off if you've been paying attention to Instagram and YouTube stories and stuff like that. And of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different video. And I think a dinosaur blaster quantifies as an entirely different. I would never have expected this. What's with the dinosaurs? Somebody, no, seriously, tell me what that's. I have no idea. Oh, gosh. You gotta 